Okay, so here is the problem um, with the cyclotron. Uh, they say that uh, it's designed to accelerate protons. Um, it has an outer radius, of, that's the maximum uh, radius, uh, you know, I, I can call it R max. Um, so so you, when you look at these spirals here, the, the path of the um, protons, um, you know, the maximum radius they can have is that much. And the protons are emitted nearly at rest. So they start from rest uh, from a source at the center. So, so I, that's, that's where the source is, or I can show it here. So it's starting uh, with the, from rest here, and they are accelerated through 574 volts. So that's the delta V, that's, you know, uh, the, the AC voltage uh, that, that keeps constantly switching back and forth. And that delta V uh, that's applied between the Ds, you know, at any uh, given moment when it gets there, that's uh, 574 volts. So um, they, as they cross the gaps uh, between the Ds, right? Um, the Ds are between the poles of an electromagnet. So, so you, you have the magnetic field in both the Ds, and uh, that magnetic field is 0.752 Tesla, OK? So all the information uh, that we need is given. Um, first part, they're asking us to calculate the cyclotron frequency for the protons, right? So, so the cyclotron frequency, you know, I'll write it here, uh, part A. Uh, cyclotron frequency, you know, uh, sometimes they they want you to give it in hertz, sometimes in radians per second. Uh, this actually is one of the web assigned problems. And if you see them asking for in radians per second, uh, what they're asking for is omega, right? Uh, if it's in hertz, then they're asking for um F. So it can be either omega or F. Uh, either one will work. Um, so if it's omega, you know, we had it as, um, I always have to start from here, R equals MV by QB. That's the only one I remember. Uh, v over R is omega. So omega is QB divided by M. And these are protons. So this is mass of a proton, right? So Q is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And your magnetic field is 0 0.752. Tesla uh, divided by mass of the proton, 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. And if you put in all the numbers, this should come out to be 7.2 times 10 to the 7 radians per second. So, so if you want it in radians per second, that's the angular frequency, cyclotron angular frequency. Um, ideally, if someone just asked me for a frequency, I would be looking for the regular frequency F, uh, which is omega divided by 2 pi, right? So, so you could either start from QB divided by 2 pi uh, times uh, the mass of the proton, or you know what you have got here, you have to divide by uh, 6 pi, uh, sorry, 2 pi, I don't know where the six came from. Yes, yeah, seven point two to the seven uh, divided by two pi. So, um, so that's something like one point one five times ten to the seven hertz. Okay. So, so you can either give it in hertz or you can give it in radians per second. This is all for part A. Uh, part B, find the speed at which the protons exit the cyclotron. Uh, so you know how the cyclotron works. Uh, you know, it, it accelerates between the Ds and eventually it will come out uh, with a certain maximum kinetic energy. So that goes with the maximum speed, which corresponds to the maximum radius, right? So um, so for that part, uh, you're doing, uh, let's see if I can take it. Yeah, so part B, uh, what's the speed, right? So it's a different color. Um, so <clears throat> maximum speed is what is asked. So I could use R equals MV by QB. And um, so uh, V is equal to QB times the radius divided by the mass. So if I'm looking for maximum speed, I'm looking for maximum R. And this is again mass of the proton, and you 
substitute for the Q and the V and the R max and divide by MP. And when you do that, uh, you should get the speed to be 2.36 times 10 to the 7 meters per second, right? So this is your V max. Okay, so that's part B. And once you have that, uh, part C is just one more step. Uh, it's asking for what's, what is their maximum kinetic energy. I'll do part C here. So maximum kinetic energy uh, is one half mv squared. Uh, v is v max. So this is mass of the proton. So you just have to substitute uh, mass of the proton, 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. And v max squared is 2.36 times 10 to the 7 meters per second squared. And when you calculate it, uh, this will be 1 half times 1.67 to the negative 27 multiplied by 2.36 to the 7. And I'm squaring that. So I end up getting something like 4.65 times 10 to the negative 13 joules, right? Uh, we can certainly stop there and say that that's the maximum kinetic energy. Uh, but, um, you know, with all these cyclotrons, the energy is usually given in electron volts. And if you're doing this on WebAssign, they, they may want you to uh, give it in electron volts so you can convert, right? So 4.65 times 10 to the negative 13 joules multiplied by the conversion, uh, one electron volt uh, is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules, right? So the joules are gone and you have the energy now in, um, you have it in electron volts, 1.6 divided well, to the power of negative 19. So, so what I get uh, is a pretty big number. So this is two, 0.91, it's actually 2.907, right? I want to keep a few decimal points. Um, 2.907 times 10 to the um, 2, 2, 4, 6, 10 to the 6 electron volts. Or I can say, you know, um, if, if this was a web assigned problem, I would round it to 2.91 mega electron volts, right? or million electron volts, like MEVs. Um, so that's the um, final um, kinetic energy, the maximum kinetic energy that comes out of it. And then um, there are a couple more things about how many revolutions does a proton make uh, in the cyclotron, right? So uh, part D, uh, let me do it on this side. So part D, they want us to calculate the number of revolutions is how much you see uh, we haven't still used uh, one piece of information that they gave us that the delta v is 574 volts right and th this part you really need to know how a cyclotron works right so the proton is accelerating between the d's right and because of the electric field and then the magnetic field will make it go around in half a circle and then again, it gets a kick between the Ds, and then it goes into a bigger circle here, right? So, so it's getting, every time it passes through the Ds, it's picking up an energy that's Q times delta V, right? So Q times delta V is the energy, right? Energy gained is equal to Q times delta V. This is, I'll say, per kick, right? Per kick. So, so it is, the energy is two times Q times delta V because it, it goes through the gap twice, right, per revolution, right. Now we know how much energy it picked up for the whole, um, you know, um, during the whole time. So if I want the number of revolutions, you know, I, I just have to take the maximum kinetic energy that it got. Uh, so I'll, I'll use the 2.907 times 10 to the um, times 10 to the 6 electron volts right mv are so many electron volts that's the maximum kinetic energy divided by uh, the energy that was gained per 
revolution, right? So per revolution, it's 2Q times delta V. So that's 2 times, I'm sorry, I'm writing everything on top of things here, 2 times. Q is actually uh, 1E. And then delta V is your uh, 574 volts. So I can actually say this is 2 times 574. You know, that gives you 1148. 1148 electron volts, right? This is volts. So, so the energy gained per revolution is 1148 electron volts. So, so you're, you're dividing the maximum kinetic energy by the energy per revolution, right? And that would give us, so if I take that and then I divide it by what I have here, that will give me the number of revolutions that's like 2,530 um, revolutions. Actually, I'm looking at what they have there. I have a feeling um, that uh, the 7.2, 7.2 is okay. I, I think I just took their answer. Maybe there were a few decimal points. I would recommend keeping them. Um, their answer to this is like 2,523 revolutions. Okay, so just be aware uh, this is close, right? Uh, but if you want it as a formula, you know, number of revolutions, you can think of as the maximum uh, kinetic energy, right? So number of revs is equal to maximum kinetic energy divided by kinetic energy per revolution, right? Okay, so that's what uh, gets you to that many revolutions. Okay, so, so you've got that. And finally, the last part, uh, part E, uh, it's saying uh, that, um, yeah, part E, um, it says for what time interval does the proton accelerate, right? So the protons in the, that means how long does it spend inside the cyclotron? So, um, so if you figure out the period, period is time for one revolution. And if you multiply it by the number of revolutions, right, number of revolutions, uh, this is the N I've got here. So number of revolutions, that will give you the, the time that it spends inside the cyclotron, right? So N and T, remember, is 1 over the frequency. So, so period is 2 pi times mass divided by QB. This is mass of the proton, right? So if you substitute, uh, you know, the number of revolutions, that's the 2530 I have. Um, 2 pi times mass of the proton kilograms and divided by the charge 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs and then the magnetic field 0.752 tesla. Uh, if you put all of that together, uh, you should get something like 0.22 milliseconds um, or 0 0.00022 seconds. Uh, this is their answer. Let me quickly say mine might be just slightly different. Um, I had 2530 times 2 times pi times 1.67 to the negative 27 divided by 1.6 to the negative 19 divided by 0.752. So yeah, so, so I do get a three zeros and a two two, yeah, that much. So that is uh, the that's how much time it spends inside inside the cyclotron, right? So this gives us an idea uh, with some numbers, right? Or you can call this 220 microseconds, right? 220 microseconds is how much time it spends in the cyclotron.